Hello everyone, my name is Joel Pasco and welcome back again to Adding Channel. So this is still part of the nursing process video series that I am creating with this channel. And we are already done with the first three phases of the nursing process, the assessment phase, the nursing diagnosis phase, and the planning phase, which is divided into two, the creation of the goal and the selection of the nursing intervention. So for today's discussion, we are going to tackle about the fourth phase of the nursing process, which is your implementation phase. Now, but before we continue with the actual discussion of this phase, don't forget to subscribe with this channel. And of course, hit the notification bell, like, comment for your suggestion, and share this video with your friends that are interested in nursing topics. So let's get, uh, discuss now the implementation phase of the nursing process. First is to define the implementation phase according to uh, according to uh, Kuzir. Okay, so according to Kuzir, implementation phase is the action phase. Okay, this, so this is the action phase, the action phase in which the nurse performs. Okay, the nursing interventions that were planned. Okay, planned during the planning phase. So these are the planned interventions that we have during the planning phase which is to um, achieve now the nursing goals that we have set and these nursing goals are based on the nursing diagnosis and the nursing diagnosis is based on the assessment findings that we have okay now in doing your implementation phase there are two things that we need to do here number one is the performance or doing Okay, the planned actions or the planned interventions. And of course, whatever we have performed, it has to be documented. It has to be documented. Okay, it has to be documented. Now, um, before we go to the process of the implementation phase, let us discuss first, okay, the skills that we need to possess before, um, uh, if we are a professional nurse or a practicing nurse for that uh, matter. Okay, so these are the things that we need to master, or if not master, at least we need to have, okay, as a nurse professionals. Okay, now in uh, implementing interventions, we have to have your cognitive skills. So your cognitive skills refers now to the knowledge, okay? This refers to the knowledge. So this refers to the knowledge of the nurse. Uh, about the condition of the patient, the prognosis of the patient's um, disease or illness, okay, the skills that we need to, to perform, okay, and um, whatever information that is related to the patient's condition. It is very important because there are instances that the, need, the patient may need to ask questions and uh, may need to ask things that they don't understand, including the family member, okay, and as a nurse, one of our major responsibilities is to provide health education and when you say health education these are information about the client's condition and as um, a carer of the patient okay whenever they ask questions we need to provide them the answer okay because and in uh, provide them the answer and of course whenever we are going to perform a certain procedure we always need to have the what we call your rationale Okay, there is always ha uh, there is always to be a reason why we do we need to perform a certain procedure or a certain things for our client. Okay, and we need to explain that clearly to our client, and we cannot explain that clearly if we don't have knowledge about the patient's condition. Okay, so that is your cognitive skills. Another one is your interpersonal skills. So interpersonal skills is the ability of the nurse to socialize, okay? The ability of the nurse to socialize and communicate, okay? And communicate. So the ability of the nurse to socialize or communicate. So this is basically important in creating or establishing rapport, okay? Establishing rapport. And when we talk about establishing rapport, we are referring to the process of gaining trust from the patient. Take note that we cannot perform a certain task if the patient does not allow us to do so. We always need to ask permission whenever we're going to perform a certain task. May it be oral or written permission or consent from the client. And sometimes patient may, um, may refuse. He may refuse to be care, cared by us 
because they don't trust us okay so before we can perform a certain task for our patient we need to establish first the trust relationship between you and um, the client and in order for you to perform that you have to have a good social skills and communication skills which is now referring to the interpersonal skills remember that our patient is the boss okay um though they are um in need with our care of or for our care but still it is their decision okay uh in relation to the um, concept or principle of autonomy wherein the self-determination kaya kailangan natin makapag-establish ng rapport and in order for us to do that is for we need to improve our interpersonal skills okay kaya nga whenever we do return demonstration in schools if you are still a student okay you do it correctly and when you say you do it correctly kapag nakalagay sa inyong checklist na uh, first step establish rapport introduce self and explain procedure okay pag nakagano pag nakalagay ng mga ganung step you have to perform Okay, you have to simulate the situation. You have to perform as if you were already handling an actual patient. Like for example, okay, if you will be performing a um, a, a vital science uh, uh, skills, okay, vital, vital science skills, and you're going to perform a third demonstration, and the step one is uh, intro, uh, establish rapport, then step two is introduce yourself, step three is explain the procedure, then must wag, wag mong i-recite na okay good morning sir i'm going to perform vital signs taking and these are the following steps first is establish rapport the number two is explain the procedure no okay it shouldn't be like that okay pag nagperform ka na okay then you inform the instructor um hello sir i'll be performing now the vital signs taking okay then i'm going to proceed now with the procedure then you go to your patient. Hello, sir. Good morning. I am Joel Pasqua. I'll be your nurse for the day. I'll be just getting your vital signs in. This is necessary for us to document and take note if there are any findings that is considered abnormal because this would be the basis of our um, the, of our interventions that we will be providing to you. Of course, we will be reporting any abnormal findings to your physician or attending physician so that they can uh, give us the order whatever is necessary with your situation. Okay. So that is introducing self, um, then establishing rapport. So pag establishing rapport, makipagkwentuhan ka sa pasyente mo, how are you today, sir? Okay. Can you please tell me more about how you feel today? Okay. May nararamdaman po kayong kakaiba. Okay, can you please tell it to me so that we are going to find out what is the best action, the course of action that we can provide you. Okay, so that is, um, that's how you practice your interpersonal skills. You talk, you have a conversation with your client and not just merely um, uh, reciting whatever steps is in your um, uh, checklist. Okay, so that's practicing your interpersonal skills. Okay, so those are two, those are the first two implementing skills that we need to learn uh, whenever we're going to perform now the nursing procedures or the nursing interventions that we have planned. The third one is your technical skills. So technical skills refers now to the psychomotor skills, okay? Psychomotor skills refers now to the psychomotor skills. So psychomotor skills refers now to the uh, basic, okay, basic and advanced, okay, nursing skills that you have learned during your nursing school days, okay. So ito yung mga ginagawa mo during return demonstration, like for example, um, injection or administration of parenteral medication such as injection through IV or intravenous, intramascular, or subcutaneous, or even intradermal. The insertion of your IFC, okay, the insertion of your IFC, the insertion of your NGT or your nasogastric tube. Those are the skills or the application of assessment procedure, like taking the vital signs, assessment cephalocaudal, okay, or from head to toe. Those are the skills. And as a good nurse, you will have to have an idea about these nursing procedures the basic and advanced nursing skills because um in our stay in the hospital there is always a time that we will be using these skills and as a professional nurse okay these are part of our responsibilities 
okay kaya dapat um whatever skills that we uh, that your instructors is teaching you in the nursing school you have to be focused and listen very carefully and of course practice the procedure from time to time and if there is a chance for you to perform it in the hospital with your instructor supervision please grab always grab the chance okay always grab the chance so that when you go for your actual duty already as a registered nurse at least you do have an idea you might not be an expert but at least you are not that novice in terms of performing the procedure Okay, so those are the implementing skills that you need to learn as a um, professional nurse, okay, to practice and perform now the nursing uh, procedures or nursing interventions that you have planned during the planning phase. Okay, the next one is the process of implementation, okay. So the process of implementation um, are the following. Number one is reassessing the client. So why is there a need to reassess the client? So you need to reassess the client before implementing the planned intervention, okay? Because um, you have to answer the question is uh, if there is still a need okay if there is still a need for you to perform the procedure there are instances na pag nag-assess tayo ang pasyente nilalagnat at this moment then after 30 minutes nung ibibigay na sana natin yung gamot biglang yung pasyente hindi na pala nilalagnat okay okay or nag-normalize na pala yung kanyang temperature okay so is there a need for you to still continue with the nursing intervention no for, kasi nga, min, minsan PRN lang naman po ang drugs natin. Okay, yung lalo sa mga PRN medications, okay, or yung mga uh, as needed na medication. So, if there is already, if there is mm, uh, already, a, uh, if there is no necessity for you to perform the procedure, okay, so you have to um, stop or you, have, um, you may choose not to perform the procedure already that you have planned even though it's part of your plan kasi nga there is there is no need already for you to perform the procedure so you have to reassess if there is still a need okay doon sa planned intervention na ginawa mo another one is determining the nurse needs for assistance this is very uh, the very good example of this is that if you are a nurse who will be working in western countries such as the US or UK we know that western um, western countries okay or westernies have a different physique compared to us asians mas malalaki po sila okay they have a, a more uh, bigger physique okay mas malaki sila in terms of physical that's why in terms of lifting and carrying patient you may need to um, to call for assistance from your fellow nurses or nursing assistants then once you have reassessed and if there is still a need and you're already determined if there is a need for assistance then you may proceed and implement the nursing interventions so in implementing the nursing interventions of course it has to be evidence-based practice it has to be evidence practice evidence-based practice what you have learned during your nursing days and what you have learned during your trainings it has to be performed uh, precisely the way it needs to be performed but you need to adjust whatever situation that you may in okay during the actual performance okay and once you have implemented the nursing interventions okay based on the planned activity that you have set during your planning phase um, you may also need to consider choosing um, nursing interventions that can be delegated to unlicensed, unlicensed practi nurse practitioner or to your nursing assistants. Uh, we have to remember that as a nurse, you will be handling, if not one, okay, if not few, you will be handling a lot of patients, especially in the Philippines, wherein the nurse patient ratio is uh, really that high. Okay, means one is to one tayo, one is to one ward. Okay, sometimes you really need to work um work you have to work um you have to work smart and not hard okay so if there is things that we can delegate to unlicensed practitioner then please do so okay and the last one is documentation so documentation is very important okay remember the principle of veracity okay so whenever you document always remember the truthfulness in whatever you are documenting and always remember the principle about documenting okay whatever that is that it is written is it is considered be done or done and whatever is not written it is considered not done
okay so that is the process of implementation phase we will end the video at this moment and please wait for our next video about the evaluation phase